What is country? What is it? Is it land? Is it economy? Is it culture? What exactly contributes to country? What makes us say that, you know, we live in this country or we live in a new country? Country is people in my mind. Country it is what's inside of people's heads. In Russia, in 2022, I saw one of the most drastic changes in any country that any country went through in pretty much history, anywhere I've heard. Russia, the way I knew it, Russia, the way it was in my eyes, is over. Because Russian people are very different now from what they were just a couple years ago. Howdy, howdy, everyone. My name is Konstantin. Um, this is Inside Russia. This is where I live stream every single day. Give you daily live streams with news updates that seem important to me and show what is truly happening in Russia currently. On this channel, Usual Russia, explained by Unusual Russian. Uh, the stream is going to be said. Uh, because if you follow me, you know that I really loved my country. I loved Russia. I loved the country that was born in early 90s um, on the ruins of the USSR. Basically, we are the ones who destroyed, who, you know, USSR, who made it change into Russia. And Russia is the country that we were building. It wasn't pretty at times. It was rough on the edges. Yes, it was, but it was our country, my country, the country I was helping to build. Uh, anyway, let's jump right into it. <laughs> For those who don't know me, I was born in the USSR. Um, Russia was born in front of me in August 1991. And uh, you know why Russia was born? <laughs> because of people. Because of the Russians. People got fed up living in communism, living in complete lie, living in inhuman conditions, in despotism. And one day they stood up and they made themselves heard. And guess what? The USSR fell at the very same moment. In three days, all it took for all people in Russia to stand up and make themselves heard. The USSR fell and the new country was born. And the new country was called Russia. The country was born inside people's heads first. And then, you know, they changed the reality around them. I can't say that living in that new country was easy at first. Um... We were trying to reinvent the wheel all the time. And like I said, it was rough on the edges. It was difficult at times. It was not pretty at times. But guess what? We felt, I felt, we all felt free. And it was a good feeling. Felt all right, you know. Uh, I made... Well, let's fast forward to 2022. If you want to hear more about what happened in Russia between 91 and 22, then you go back and watch my video that I called Rip Russia, the brief history of Russia, 91 to 22. I made it back in March. Back then I felt that Russia ended the way I knew it. And you know what? There were very few signs of that. Of that death, you know. Um, but it was predictable. And I had a gut feeling. 
very strong gut feeling that this is it. The Russia I knew is in the past. The new country is born. It's evolving right in front of my eyes. It's... Uh, one year later. This is... Tomorrow is February 1st in Uzbekistan. It's already past midnight. And... Um, few weeks left until it's going to be one year since the madness started. And one year later, I can say that back then in March, I was absolutely right. The old country is dead and the new one is born. And boy, the new one is not pretty. What makes me say that? Well, it's actually very simple. It's right there on the surface. Uh, it's about how government treats people uh, and then how people react. Before Russia, before February 2024, Russia was one country and Russians were one people. You know, Russia is a multi, very multinational country with over 100 nationalities. On my memory, it was in Russia. It was never... Chechen, Ingush, Yakut, Bashkir, Tatar, Russian, Georgian, Armenian, Ukrainian, Belarusian. We did not divide people by their nationalities. They were all Russians, all Russian citizens, all Rasiyani, as we say in Russia. Russian government government's policy was all included, no one excluded. They were the ones who didn't agree with the government, the disobedient ones. Well, what about them? They were still included. They were still Russians. They were, they were measures to quiet those people down and even to silence them, to convince them to cause the government's, co uh, the government's agenda, government's cause. Um, to change their mind. They were even measures to punish them, but only within existing legislation. You know, they were punished as Russians. If you disagreed with the government, you were still Russian, Russianian. Let's fast forward now to now. Um, the government has changed the rules of the game. Instead of all included, no one excluded paradigm, there's another one in place. You are either with us, one of us, or you either, or you with them, one of them. Us versus them. Us versus enemies. And they have been changing this paradigm. It wasn't revolution. It wasn't changed overnight. Um, I've said many times, Russian government is very smart at uh, brainwashing people, at changing people. It works by stepping stones. In the West, you call it boiling the frog strategy. Small, tiny increments. Um, what they have been doing for the past year is first it was, oh, this is easy and fast special military operation in Ukraine. It's not against Ukrainians. Oh, no. And Ukrainians are brothers and sisters. It's precisely against Ukrainian government. The neo-Nazis, you know, we're going to take them out and that's it. We're not going to touch Ukrainians. Then it became, oh, Ukraine is getting backed by the West. Hmm, that's different now. Then it became, oh, there's a collective West. It's not Ukraine anymore. It's the collective West, and we are at war with the West, with NATO. 
with the Western world. And then it turned into it's the Third World War. It's us versus them. Uh, all Russians who disagree with the position of the government, you know, it's modern party line, as I say it, who ask questions, who stand up and make themselves heard, they're not included anymore. Uh, now, all of a sudden, those Russians are them, not us. And they're dealt with differently. They're punished they're punished in the way unimagin unimaginable before, okay? Uh, they are punished as enemies, and you can do anything to enemies. Citizenship threatened to be stripped. Bank account frozen. Property confiscated. You merely left the country, and you're residing abroad. You don't want to go and get mobilized and go kill Ukrainians. You don't want to join your comrades. We can't control you abroad? Well, you're a foreign agent then. You say something against actions of you, Russia in Ukraine? You What? You disagree? Well, you're a foreign agent then. You're one of them. You're not one of us anymore. You are the enemy. Even though you have Russian citizenship and we feel, if, even if you... You know, we were born and raised in Russia. If you live in Russia or live outside, you know, it doesn't matter. You're the enemy. You're one of them. Well, some might say, no, that's when it gets important. Now listen to me. You say, or some say, it's just the government. Because the government brainwashes, the government puts these ideas into hand, uh, heads of people. It's just the government. The government is bad. Putin is bad. You know, his government is bad. His friends are bad. You know, once he's gone, once the government has changed, then everything's going to go back to normal. And I heard many Russians say that. My friends, oh, that's a mistake. Uh, initially, it is the government. Yes, it's the government who comes up with these ideas, who comes up with the strategy of stepping stones, comes up with the actions and conducts actions. But that uh, what government does, it not only brainwashes people, it changes people's minds. It alters their reality. In reality, in their heads, becomes different, you know? Once the reality is changed, placed, new one, you know, altern alternated one is placed in their heads, there's no way back. Very slowly and very painfully long, they only come back to normal, to normal reality, to the way it is, to the way the world is, you know. Look at Germany. They faced that problem before. How long has it taken Germans to come back to normal reality? Was it easy for them? Was it was it a very fast uh, way? Was it very fast a process? Well, ask Germans. And this is the reality. New country is this new reality. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Good example. Imagine a big, heavy truck, 16-wheeler, you know, this huge, loaded. And you sit and you start driving it. And it takes you quite some time, efforts, gasoline, you know, uh, to get the truck going, to get it going fast. But what happens when it starts going fast and all of a sudden you see unexpectedly an obstacle in front of you? You slam the brakes, but it does not stop. It keeps on going as if the brakes are not there. Ask any trucker, and they'll tell you that. Because truck 
already has gained so much momentum, it's going to take a long time or a long distance for it to stop. Russian people, well, majority of them, have already gained that momentum. Their minds have been changed. The reality have, has been replaced. It's different now. It's distorted, but it's the fact. There's no way back. It's been done. You, you got to understand that. It's been done. What the heck am I talking about? You know, what I've just said is a general idea and um, concept, you know. And I like facts and examples. For example, they say, uh, they tell us, oh, we are in Ukraine to denazify and demilitarize. Well, tell me who the Nazis are, how many of them in Ukraine, what a Nazi looks like, uh, what is the characteristics of a Nazi. Give me the details. You know, who can you call a Nazi and who can you call not? And how many Nazis have you, what are you going to do with them to denazify them? What are you going to put them to jail or kill them? Or what, what is denazification? How many Nazis have you other in Ukraine and you have to denazify? They, you know, things like that. And <laughs> what the government does, it never gives details. It never, it never, um, never um, gives facts, you know, never gives examples. Because if, if it does, you can ask the government after some time, have you done that? Have you done this? Okay, so I am all into the details. So let's, let me explain what I mean by the details. How, um, what has changed in people in my country? Okay, well, I think there are a few things. First is senseless cruelty. I cannot say that Russians were cruel uh, before. Um, they're actually nice, kind-hearted people. But what started happening in Ukraine uh, changed them a lot. People have become more ruthless. You can see it in the news. You can see it in everyday life. And um, this is the reality in Russia. And this is what happens when you are exposed to uh, cruelty every single day. You see it in the news. You see your government people talking about it as if it's normal. Uh, before, news never showed that people in the pictures, blood or anything like that now. You turn on TV, you see it every single day, you know. People get used to that, and that changes them. They become ruthless. And in my mind, it's senseless cruelty. Um, in the past, Russians only became like that when they were drunk. You know, there was a certain, certain number of Russians who drank a lot and once that get drunk, they would just lose it, and they would become very ruthless, cruel. There were fights, there were um, domestic violence, you know, murders uh, by drunk people under influence of alcohol, and the government tried to control it. It created special laws, trying to hang, uh, to get cap on this kind of violence, um, and different measures. But now, this ruthlessness and senseless cruelty everywhere, okay? Um, cases like the guy comes back from Ukraine and uh, takes a cab, starts talking to a cabbie, and cabbie says, well, you know what, I'm against what's going on in Ukraine, and the guy just murders him right in the cab, cruelly, cruelly. Things like that happen every single day, and they're all over the news in Russia, okay? And that doesn't shock anyone anymore. So what I'm seeing is people have become, well, senseless cruelty has become their more normal than it was before. Another thing, revanchism. 
Uh, that's a big one. In the 90s, we lived peacefully and we tried to make our living the way we could. People would start business, people would try different things, you know, people would, um, they would just do anything to make a living. They never, never complained and never blamed about someone was trying to make their lives miserable, bad on purpose, okay? Uh, they complained about how the change from the USSR to Russia could have been done differently. That That's true. I complained a lot. They complained about Gorbachev. But that, that was it. It was nothing major. Uh, well, in the past year, people have been planted this idea, which is I call revanchism. We, we could be living great, but they don't let us. It is not our fault that we live in dirt. It's them. It's NATO. It's the West. They hate Russians. They don't want us to live good, fulfilling, rich lives that we deserve. And then this is the stupidest, stupidest concept I've ever heard in my life because it doesn't, it falls apart if you start asking questions. It just, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to actually destroy this concept. Um, lots of people, most people in Russia, they know of corruption. They know how corrupted Russian politicians are. They know how corrupted Russian oligarchs are. They know that there is a um, huge, huge deal of control from the government. And if you start asking them questions, but wait a second, you think it's the West that um, makes our lives miserable? Okay, yes, it's the West. What about the roads? The roads are in terrible conditions in, in, in many places in Russia, okay? It's, uh, it's like anecdote among Russians. And the problem is that people who are in charge of fixing the roads, maintaining the roads, building the roads, they steal money, plain and simple. Everyone knows that. It's mafia, you could say. It's an organized scheme of stealing money from the government. Okay, so everyone knows that. So is it the Americans responsible for us having bad roads? Or it's certain people who steal money, who have uh, huge mansions inside Russia and abroad, who drive very expensive cars, and they have very, very modest salaries. So is it Americans' faults, fault? Or is it these people who are stealing? Perhaps if they weren't stealing, then we would have had nice roads. And same with everything, okay? But somehow the government has managed to convince people that it's not our fault, that we don't work hard enough. No. We are not smart enough. Oh, Russians smart and smartest in the world, the most hardworking people. We just drink too much. We're too late. No, no, it's not that. It's them, the collective West led by the Americans. It's their fault. And the problem is that once you make people believe that, this is like a drug. There's no way back. They're not gonna they're not gonna turn back and say, well, you know what? I'm responsible for my life. If I worked hard enough, if I went to school, perhaps if I, you know, started business, I would have lived better. But no, because to admit that is painful. It hurts. It says that you fudged up your life. You, you, not anyone else, but you, you're responsible for it. No, they don't do that because it's much easier. It's much sweeter to say, it's not up to me. It's them. You can see it everywhere. 
Daniel at his channel 1420 does a great job showing that he speaks to regular Russians at different places and what they say we have no choice we were forced to attack Ukraine of course we must kill all the Nazis NATO is at the door I mean what are you talking about we are in danger uh, and these people they sincerely believe my friends that's the most scariest part they sincerely believe that they were made to believe and they were you know they gave this they were given this idea and they grabbed onto it and all of a sudden it became their light oh my gosh how how could we not understand our village is falling apart my house is so old you know instead of taking a hammer and nails and fixing it up no it's their fault it's them it's them the evil west you know this is for many people i think it's a life saving idea because um I think they were feeling pretty bad about fudging up their lives, you know. So revanchism is another thing that is in the heads of Russians now. Another another one big thing is denunciation. Denunciation. Anonymous denunciation. Um, people start denunciate other people the freshest example i just heard of today in the news um, the city of krasnodar not too far from rostov in the south of russia there was a couple a husband and wife sitting in the restaurant eating and discussing the war with ukraine obviously they did they they said something loudly and other people overheard that didn't like it most likely they were saying oh we don't like what Russia is doing in Ukraine. Guess what happened? People who overheard, they called cops. The cops came, handcuffed the couple. Uh, they were handcuffed for a couple hours. There was investigation. I'm not sure what happened. Were they charged or they were let go? But that's a fact. That happened. There are so many facts coming that um, people are denunciated. Teachers overhear students in high schools saying something about parents. Call cops and say, hey, you know what? This parent such and such, you know, said that. And cops come in and give fines for spreading fakes. Um, things like that is like an avalanche. It's becoming worse and worse. And the thing is, it's nothing new. It happened in the USSR, not was one of the things that I was very ashamed of about my country in my past. And I thought it was in the past. And I can't believe it's coming back right now. It's like people are so unhappy about their lives when they have a chance, slightest chance, to make someone's life miserable. Worse, you know, destroy someone's life. They do it. It's like they get pleasure out of it. I don't know. Uh that's another another thing that is in Russia's Russians heads and this is a, another one moving on um, us against them this is a true thing that a lot of people use to judge other people now in Russia are you one of us are you one of them um, I don't even know how to approach it. I think concept is fundamentally wrong. There is not, there can't be one of us, one of them. And the thing is, we Russians, we lived in Russia without this concept. We are all included for 30 years. And it was pretty good. And the very same people changed their paradigm from that nice one to this one of us. And who, are you one of us or are you one of them? In, in, in mere 11 months, and it seems like a lot of people are enjoying it. Not much I can comment um, on, this, on this. I am a victim of this paradigm, new paradigm, because I am asked this question quite often these days when I speak to people in Russia. Even members of my family, you know, some of them, are they can't, ask me that directly but they kind of like uh, 
making a suggestion. So what do you think? You know, you like this or you like that? And it's clear that their hidden message is clear. Are you one of them, us or one of them? And it hurts, you know, it really does hurt. Um, but that's the reality. So four things that tell me that Russia has been changed and it's been changed, I would say forever, for generations at least. Uh, senseless cruelty, revanchism, the culture of denunciation and uh, one uh, us versus them paradigm. You know, so it's come down to this again. Are you one of us? Are you one of them? Back in the USSR, it was very common that people were asking this question. Until about 1985, 1986. After that, things started going sour for the communists. People, this country got feverish. There were so many changes. After Gorbachev um, declared glasnost in Perestroika, then that question started diminishing. But before, oh yeah. If you disagree, that means you're one of them. If you say something that goes against party line, it's not, not with party, you're one of them. And to be one of them was pretty darn bad. Uh, same thing is right now, one of us, but you know what, who are us, who are us, who are us in Russia, who are us, the ones who follow party line, that is the key question, who are we in Russia, who are these new people are, and the answer to this question is not romantic, but very, very, very simple, primitive, I should say. I think us is those who want to live on and possibly live well. That's exactly what they mean by saying it's us. They just want to live on in the country that is called Russia and they accept its new rules. The government, Russian government, I think it's pushed aside now because even even if it's changed, um, nothing much is going to change. New people will come. They will not replace this people's minds. Okay, they will not um, overnight say, hey, you know what, war in Ukraine was bad, that was a mistake, um, now you have all the freedoms back, you know, they can't do that, because people, what they have in their heads, they don't change that fast, it's gonna take generations, because they must admit, we were lied to, we were wrong, it's our mistake, and what have we done? That's the question that regular people must ask themselves, and they will not, because answering that question is very, very painful. Trust me, I know. I've asked myself this question, and I answered it. I don't think too many people will do that. It's not pretty. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for coming to hear my message. I would like to hear your feedback, your opinions. Please comment, ask questions. I'd be glad to answer them before I turn the comments on. As usual, I am asking you two things. First, please help spread my message by making reposts in the social media accounts that you have. And second, please sign up uh, to my Telegram channel called Inside Constantine's Russia. Description is below. Um, the video when I end live streaming so I can keep you updated uh, on recent development on developments of the channel and you can get announcements thank you so very much turn it in the comments now
If you're not seeing the comments, then please refresh your page. It should appear. Only subscribers to the channel who are subscribers more than one day can comment. So everyone here is a subscriber. Thank you so much. I would like to thank the mods for coming back. Lorna, Mommy, Bob S, Harry, Amir and Blackhead. Howdy, howdy. And everyone else, uh, the usual suspects, people who come back every every single day. Thank you so much. And uh, fresh faces are welcome. Thank you for coming. If you want me to answer, to notice your question or comment, make it easier for me, please. Put it in caps and put Inside Russia After Ad Sign so it appears in a large orange box. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's jump right into the questions. Beritus, thank you for the heartfelt message. Can you describe the core ideology of the new Russia and uh, how the government and media will influence the nation psyche? <laughs> Beritus, I just, I tried to explain in the stream. <laughs> I guess I failed to explain it um, clearly, so you're asking me this question. How will Russia look like in 10 years? If nothing happens and the things that go in the way they are have been going, then Russia is going to be looking like right now in terms of what's in people's heads, but worse. And econ economically, the living standard will be so low. People will basically have to grow their own potatoes to survive. You know, that's what I think. Us versus them will remain to become, uh, to be the, the, the um, psych, as you see, national psych. Are you one of them or one of us? If you're one of us, you can get away with murder. If you're one of them, you have no right to exist. That's the new national psych. Oh, quite a few messages today. Thank you. Um, so I'm just reading the ones in caps and with a large orange box. What is the new name for enemies of people or the counter-revolutionaries? Foreign agents. I did a stream on it yesterday. The enemies? Foreign agents. Now they're just called foreign agents, but then very soon it's going to be the synonymous of the enemies. One of them, your foreign agent. Foreign agent, whatever you have, it's going to be confiscated, money taken away, property, apartments, houses. You will stripped of all rights. You're stripped of citizenship. God forbid you go outside of Russia. Oh my gosh, we're going to curse you with shamans, you know. Kaig, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your message. Clash 1100, thank you so much. So what to do for emigrants from Russia? Or more like, what can we do and how to live on? What to do for emigrants from Russia? For, for what? For you? What are you going to do with emigrants from Russia? What can we do and how to live on? I don't understand the question. Are you... Asking from the Russian point of view, from a foreigner point of view. Uh, for a Russian, how to live on? I don't really know. I live day by day. I left Russia. I can share my personal experience. You know, I left Russia. I don't want to come back there. And how to live on? I don't really know. I'm in reinventing the wheel. I'm relying on God's help and uh, the best, I do the best I can. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't have the exact answer for you. What can you do? What can we do? I don't know. What, what can I do? I, I take it day by day and I try to make the best out of it. And what can you do? I don't know. Jesus. So what is the role of close friends in such environment? Um, uh, it's very chaotic environment. There are no rules anymore. My closest friends are on my side. 
they are they have the same opinions as I do. They have same view of life, view of world as I do. Probably that is why we're the best friends. So I have not lost any close friends and I have not given up on any close friends. Some people I have decided not to speak to uh, because I don't want to fight and I can't convince them of my point of view and I don't want to, to he even hear their point of view. Some distant family members, some not close friends, but people that I know. And um, I just take it person by person. That's it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay human. I'm trying to stay nice with them. I try to, <laughs> I try to do the best I can. That's the answer. Bert Cargan, uh, my fellow Mainer, it's great to see you. Long time no see. Thank you so much for support and just nice to see you, to so see your face on the picture. You know. How things have changed, huh? I, re I remember our conversations from long ago. Man, how things have changed. Thank you. Jekyll N, thank you so much for your message as usual. Um, no message, but this message is very strong and powerful. I appreciate it. White Lightning, as usual, with great questions or statements. Listening to you puts chills down my spine. I felt like I'm back in history class at <laughs> high school, actually. Uh, imagine how I feel. That certainly puts chills down my spine, you know, because I'm just, I'm living it. I have the head roll, like, the, the big role like um, I felt like I'm back in history class in high school lectured on fall of Roman Republic Julius Caesar did what Putin does like Jonestown cult also I'm not sure I know what's Jonestown cult but yes yes uh, you know that I'm a fan of Roman history and I uh, Julius Caesar definitely, definitely changed things for the worse. He was the one who crossed the Rubicon. That was the law that not one Roman under any circumstances could not cross the Rubicon. The armed one, legions or army under any circumstances. And he did. Well, I'm not sure Putin did exactly the same thing, but the idea is pretty much the same. It's from now on, that's the way down. For the Roman Empire, was it took 150 years to fall apart. And for Russia, we live in 21st century, not uh, 1st century AD, you know. Um, for Russia, it's going to take years, I think, very short years. Jason Carney, you're back with a bang. Thank you so much for me and my wife. I appreciate all the support that you provided. Thank you. And this land of plenty for your breakfast club. Thank you, my friend, fellow Mena. Jason Carney has given the sponsorship of the channel to 10 people. Thank you from me again, and thank you from 10 people. Please come, everyone, to Saturday. I do private live streams. A uh, little different than the usual ones. I talk about myself. I talk about uh, news and my life. And we discuss things that are interested to the viewers, to the sponsors, patrons. So thank you so much for, again, Jason, for giving this gift of sponsorship. And all sponsors and patrons, please come back to the stream um, this coming Saturday. We have a new sponsor, well, not a new one. I think there's an upgrade from Truffles to Deep Inside Russia. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. 
Uh, and there's a message from Truffles. It's so sad to see a beautiful culture so fractured and damaged. I'm afraid you're right about how unlikely it is to turn it back. Blessings to you and yours. Thank you. I think if you look at what I said in the Russia from the position of common sense, then you you get the same idea that I do, same opinion. Thank you for your support and thanks for the statement. Uh, Wanda, uh, hello and thank you so much for your support. No message, but this message is strong enough. Does Neil? Thank you for giving sponsorship of um, this channel to 10 people. Again, from me and from 10 people. Thank you so much. It's great to see you coming back every day. Okay, jumping into the questions. Niels Christensen. Hello, everyone. Druzhba i mir. Mikhail Filipov, hey, greetings from Tampere. There was a movie, uh, Cat Lovers, remember that. Miko from Tampere is asking for advice. Back in the USSR. <laughs> Name kind of stuck there. Joanna Sandberg. Sandberg. Much love from Sweden. Thank you. Thank you so much. Egg Kala. People are social beings. Suffer when the groups begin to experience crisis. Houses can be rebuilt. Assets can be recovered. Mistrust remain for a long time. And this is basically the quintessence of what I was trying to say. Again, if tomorrow everything changes... Putin says, you know what, made a mistake, I resign. The government says, okay, we resign, we follow Putin. And these actors of the political scene, the current ones, leave and say, well, the new ones, please come in. We give you the stage. And the new ones come in, and the truth comes out, and the, the propaganda disappears, and the truth starts broad, being broadcasted. No, it's like slamming the brakes of a truck that's going down the hill at 150 miles an hour, loaded. Not going to happen. Well, first of all, it's not probable that it'll happen, but if something like a change, a drastic change happens, there will be no drastic change here. We have a new sponsor, Lisa V. Welcome to Inside Russia. And Roderick Klein, also welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you for joining. Guy L, the Howdy crew is here with the fudge. I think there were a couple with the fudges, but trust me, if I could speak freely, there'd be many more what the fudges in the stream because this is a what the fudge situation. Mas Vidas Cessnas. Uh, much love from Lithuania. <laughs> Thank you. Every time I receive a comment, let alone super chat from Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, it really warms my heart. Thank you. I don't know as we are as nation will ever forgive USSR Russian, but I hope one day things will change. And you know what? I totally understand you. I understand where you're standing at. I uh, understand where you're coming from. And I am not expecting that you can forgive so easily, especially now. Uh, Russia had 30 years to prove, you know, things change if you, um, what's the best example would be, I don't know if it's the best, but the credit history. You take a loan and the bank trusts you and then you just, default and you say well you know what that's it then the bank doesn't trust you and no one that trusts you anymore but then you rebuild you start taking the right actions you start paying your bills you start uh, in improving your credit rating and so forth and you do it over a long period of time and the trust 
from everyone and from the banks is rebuilt. Well, not sure if it's the best example, but, you know, uh, the trust can also be rebuilt between countries and between people. And uh, it just takes a long time and lots of actions. But what Russia did in 2022... Just, I don't know what to tell you. I don't understand. I'm, I'm still, I'm still dumbfounded. How, how to say this word? Down, fudged, dumb, dumb f something. You know, uh, shocked. Uh, Wanda inside Russia. What allowed the group from 1917 to have a successful revolution? There was a draining war then too. Was that government more lenient? No, that government not not only was not more lenient, it was ruthless. It 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 uh, created Stalin, and Stalin created Red Terror. I mean, that government was a disaster for Russia, and the whole situation was a disaster. You know, are you suggesting that? This war will result in a successful revolution. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. That that I'm not an expert on. I cannot predict. I cannot say anything about that. I simply don't know much. Thank you so much for the question and thank you for uh, a super chat. I I'm sorry. I don't. I can't answer. That. I can't answer that. <clears throat> Nicholas, welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you. Uh, Lori Hill, much love. My heart hurts for you as all happens day by day in this craziness and shores. Lori, you know, there are two angles to look at this situation. The first angle is my country. My country is ruined. It's a fact. I mean, it's safe to say that Russia is no more. New country, I don't know. They should give it a new name because every time they say Russia, it's kind of like cringes inside of me. Uh, I don't know what's good is going to happen in Russia and about Russia. I don't see any good happening soon. Another angle is my personal, my my life. You know, my life. My life is not has not ended. Um, I still live, and I start seeing it as an opportunity, opportunity to do something different with my life. My cause is different. Before I just worked, I had family. Now, well, you know, if you come here every, and you certainly do, um, often you know my cause, you know the manifesto, you know what I try to do with my life. That's something new, and I re I really really enjoy it. Uh, so, it's very painful, yes, but. Also, I am feeling like new me is being born. And hopefully it's going to be good, you know. So we have uh, Gary Black, new sponsor. Welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you. Donna Olson from Beverly Hills. Uh, late, very busy days at my job. Well, Lord, Donna, th thank you so much for coming. Um Late is much better than never. So, you know, thank you. Thank you for your support and thanks for coming. Faraz Newman, thank you. Hello, Constantine. Russia before was made up of kind, hardworking people like you. Hence, it won against communism. Russia now is a failed state because it has lost people like you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, not necessarily agree. I mean, but thank you. Uh, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Susanna D. 
Sirbo. Uh, thank you. Pretty cool animation. I like it. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. To photography. Hello. Welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, please explain. Russia spends 76 milliard every year on the army. The USA 742 milliard billion. You mean milliard is billion. The EU spends 177. Explain me what the Russian government think to do on site. The Ukraine. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood correctly. Think to do on site of the Ukraine. Like once it gets to Ukraine. I think Russian government... Well, first of all, if we're talking about decisions like that. We're not talking Russian government. We're talking certain people. You know who I'm talking about. And I think they have no clue. I think they... what Where they are now is far away from what they planned in the beginning. I think they planned was to take Ukraine in three days, to take over Kiev. Zelensky runs to Poland. They install their own president, for example, Yanukovych. And Ukraine is uh, a puppet country. It's... You know, if you look from afar, it's sovereign, but it's under Russian influence. That's it. That's what their plan was. I think they didn't plan anything else. And what they're trying to do right now, I think they have no clue. There's no strategy to their actions, just tactics. That's a bad situation. Duke of Earl, Eisenhower thought it could take up 100 years to denazify Germany. German people through evidence and trials of their leadership, moved to reason, so too will happen with Russia eventually. My friend, thank you for coming back. Thank you for excellent questions. The thing is, I'm not going to live 100 years. The next 20 years, I think, is going to be horrendous in Russia. And... That's going to be my life if I decided to live in Russia, to remain in Russia. I want to live in a good country, in a peaceful country, you know, in a country that has a good neighbor and doesn't wage wars on other countries. Um, 100 years, I agree with you. It's going to take at least 100 years for Russia, just like for Germany. But none of us have 100 years, you know. None of people living right now, adults, have 100 years. That's going to take generations. It's actually very, very sad. We have a new sponsor, couple, Larry Johnston. Welcome to Inside Russia. And JM, also welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you so much for joining. Lando Plenty has given the gift of sponsorship to 10 people thank you so very much um bill c constantine if russia first divides but then voluntarily and originally forms a democratic union although difficult might it not be a better union for the future generations it might be I mean, I can't tell you exactly. That's one of the ways, um, one of possible ways. But let me tell you something. Probably not the best way because if Russia first divides, you know what that divide will be? The civil war. It's going to be lots of blood. It's going to be hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people killed. Bloodiest absolutely unnecessary ruthless civil war that's what that divide will be and what's going to be after the divide I don't know I don't want to go that path Gary Black thank you so much for your support you are number one thank you Heather, um, 
thank you so much for coming back great to see you i'm seeing subscribers from your channel say that the us is not taking russians but i can't find any primary sources verifying this do you have a source i think this is important information if needed this is not true ah if indeed if it's not true well the usa is taking russians as it was taken before as it's taking guatemalians mexicans i don't know cubans or whatever i have not heard of a drastic change in the u.s policy on russian people what i have heard from pretty trusted sources is that russian people go into mexico flying to mexico they're stopped at the border upon entry to mexico and they're turned back because mexico treats russians as potential uh, border crossers into the united states and that is a fact uh, russian embassy has written about that you can go and look it up uh, there's been information in numerous telegram channels and like i said uh, there's a guy who is organizing you know uh, trips like trips like that he is he knows people who were turned down that's that's you know there's no way around it um i will get you the contacts of that guy i wrote him but i have not received the answer back yet so there you have it that's my answer the usa is not taking russians it's not true i haven't heard anyone say that but the mexicans not taking russian oh yeah yeah that's true bill c could outside influences changes balance of sanctions versus investment influence against civil war no nothing well nothing nothing can influence civil war when it gets to civil war it's going to be uncontrollable situation like not controlled by the government the government doesn't care of anything right now but to actually not the government but putin and his inner circle they care about one thing to hang on to power for as long as possible that's their doesn't matter what happens as long as they're hanging on to power um that's it you have to look at the situation in russia at that angle at the angle of why this is happening if putin was given an option hey stop the war right now we'll give you immunity we will not touch you but get out of ukraine or whatever but uh, if he knew that that would save his power he would do that just like that okay that's my opinion so nothing can influence against well help against civil war but the russians themselves that that would be my answer bless r thank you so much for your support i appreciate it thank you um uh -huh. duke has another statement it won't take 100 years for russia to correct as it did for germany it is rich with natural gas and mineral wealth needed for the green revolution it has future needs leaders ah uh, you know i agree with you on many things most things but here i disagree and that's what my stream was about today suppose new leaders come imagine a cruise ship it gets going you know but then uh once it gets going you try to stop it and you shut down the engines but it keeps on going and you run around and you try to you know push it backwards and stuff but it just runs over you that cruise ship huge cruise ship is russian people what's inside their minds they will keep on going the new leaders gorbachev was a great leader what happened to him he's hated by most russians all the russians okay that's what the role of new leaders in russia is
Mikael Werner, thank you so much. Have hope for your country, Constantine. Much love from Sweden. To you and all Russians during this difficult time, love will win over hate. Let's pray for that. Thank you so much. I'm not giving up on my country. No, I'm 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 I have hope. It's just I am being realistic about things what are happening there with current people in charge. Okay. I definitely have hope. Mods with us. Thank you again. Step by step, you and many other Russians give hope for better time. We'll pray for Ukraine and for freedom for Russia. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Very heartwarming to hear that. Thank you. White Lightning. Could the group National Republican Army do go, do to Putin what the Romanians did to Ceausescu? <laughs> Maybe with CIA help. My friend, you don't need CIA help. Uh, people need nothing left to lose first. Uh, nothing left to lose first. Um, at this point... I think that it's not possible. But what happens if people will realize that they've been lied to and been stolen from, like the government would steal from them for, for a long time. Once they realize that they've been brainwashed, oh, you watch out. Once they get angry, there will be a wave of blood. Anonymous, howdy, howdy. See you hard. Wish I could do more. Hey, listen, that's thank you so much. Your money is definitely needed and welcome, but your words are priceless. Thank you so very much. Bill C. I pray that once Putin and his core power group fall, mid level power, office class, governors, mayors could maybe seek rational policies to avoid war depends perhaps if any leaders like Navalny survive Bill I'm sorry to break your bubble you're right about uh, Putin and his core power they are on top but office class has been gone well for a great deal has been gone People like me, I consider myself an office class. Look around, I look around. There are thousands, tens of thousands of people outside of Russia. Office class has run away. Governors and mayors were installed. They were not selected, elected by people. They were installed by Putin and his deputies. So they are supporters of Putin. Okay, and they will, if things, you know, start falling apart, those people will not contribute to seeking rational policies. They will try to grab as much money and as much property, well, not property, because in that case, property would be <laughs> useless. They will try to grab as much money and run far away to Europe, where I am pretty sure they will be welcomed. So any leaders like Navalny survive? Any more leaders like Navalny? Well, name name one more, except for Navalny. Charlie B from Pacific Beach, howdy. Uh, Mariam Dwenger, uh, hello from Germany. Mirjam, Mirjam, I'm sorry. I'm pretty bad with names. P.L. Demery Graham. Um, revanchism, retaking lost territory, and revisionism, rewriting history, are deeply intervened. Um, I was talking about revanchism, not Taking, retaking lost territory, but more like retaking lost pride that was hurt uh, when the USSR failed. That's probably what would be a good explanation. 
Robin Petit, I feel very bad for you. Thank you. The sooner Putin is removed, the better for Russia. I cannot argue with that. Leslie Fleming, howdy. Sugarland, Texas. Truffles. RW, uh, my friend, I don't want to say your name for privacy reasons, but thank you for uh, stopping by. It's, it's a pleasure to see you. Please read my uh, message to you on Patreon. Do not despair in this darkness. There is a larger plan for all of us, for us all. Um, it's hard not to despair sometimes. Sometimes good days, but sometimes days hit... Uh, that, oi, you just rather forget about them and not remember ever, like not have any memories and recollections of those days. Sometimes I feel very, very bad, and all I have, all I can do is to take it day by day. John Wakamatsu, howdy, buy some coffee and take care of yourself. Have you noticed I'm not drinking any tea today? Well, I'm not drinking anything. Haven't drank anything today. Um, today and tomorrow, no water, no liquid, no food for me. And on the third day, there will be water. And I'm going to fast for seven days. So uh, after that, there will be plenty of tea drinking. Thank you so much, John, from Los Angeles. Mads fan, when the majority of Russian population can't feed their families, then there will be changes. Could be or could be not. Now, I go back to that example over and over again. I hope you're not tired of it. That's a terrible example, but that kind of goes along with what you just wrote. Imagine this, a Russian village, well, a large village, like 30,000 people live there. Um, small town, I should say. And there's mobilization. Cops come in onto the main square, and um, there are a couple of buses, mobilization officers and cops. And then people come voluntarily by families, bring in their kids, 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, early 20s, everyone is terrified, everyone is crying, fathers, mothers are crying, uh, women are hysterical, uh, but they give their kids to the hands of cops and mobilization people. They're crying, they're just, it's like the end of the world, but they give them with their own hands. What do you say of that? I've seen that happening. After that, I figured that there's nothing can be done that will change Russians' minds on mobilization. Because if, if you give your own kid to the beast to feed on, you tell me what more valuable is there in your life than your child, than your son. And if you give your son with your own hands to the feast of the beast. And so I can see that the same thing can be happening with um, when they run out of food. They will be starving, but um, saying, uh, what can we do? Enemies around us. It's not our fault. It's their fault. It's NATO. It's the collective West. They stole all our, all our food. You know, they just did that and that and. So I'm not so sure. Jesus, sorry to say this, but I think that in 20 years, global warming will be biggest fish to fry for Russia. Bigger fish to fry. Well, I don't, don't feel sorry to say this. We'll see. That's uh, We don't know what's going to happen with that. I, I just, global warming, I wait and see. Uh, there is one, well, actually there are two places. One in Russia, one in the United States. Uh, 
Old Orchard Beach is where I used to live. And the Black Sea, where I used to come to vacate in Sochi when I was a kid. And, you know, currently. And I see when I was six years old, there was the sea level that is absolutely same as the sea level in Sochi right now. Same thing on Old Orchard Beach. 22 years ago, 25 years ago, there was this exact sea was at exactly same level um, as it is right now. I'm not saying there is no global warming. Don't get me wrong. Okay, what I'm saying is um, the sea is not rising. Uh, we will see how it's going to be rising in 20 years. We'll just wait and see and we will see how weather will be changing. That's something for us to see. Newfoundland, Ryan Cameron. Hey, great to see you. Fantastic. You know, my neighbor, because I used to live in Maine. Mooncake42, I worry more and more about your safety. An old lady in Canada. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> honestly, that's a, I'm giving you a little secret right now. I worry more and more about my own safety too. <laughs> Uh, Danielski, uh, greetings from Belgium, howdy howdy, Ron S, beautifully put, it's just like that saying, all for one and one for all, thank you Ron, not Magnus Carlsen, thank you for your support, I listen to you, Vlad Vexler and Lex Friedman, you three remind me that many Russian heart have goodness, kindness and honesty in it, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, Vlad Vexler, when he was growing up in Moscow, I think he lived uh, in Moscow until age nine. He lived not too far from the place where I lived in Moscow, where my apartment was, and not too far from where I worked. I spent 20 plus years, no, not 20, 18 plus years going to office back and forth, you know, so... We kind of come from the same place originally. Jade, Michael, Constantine, it's the Iron Curtain back. I grew up in that area and recognize it fully. Why well, had steams on that? I absolutely agree with you. It's back with a bang. It's a, it's a new approved Iron Curtain. As one of the uh, experts said in Russia, Perhaps it's not the iron curtain, but plastic curtain. Chris George. Uh, I didn't quite understand the question about legs. <laughs> Two legs and four legs. Anarchy. Whoa. Uh, long time no see. That's the viewer from... Way back, I think you were my patron, one of the first patrons uh, back in September, October of 2021. Thank you for coming back, and it's great, great to see you. Thank you. A plus Russian, howdy. Golden Griffin, also... Um, person who started watching me probably on the day one my early videos about Russia thank you so much being here every single day thank you Lisa Marshall howdy Marsha Tucker from Tennessee howdy Brian Woods also a person who's been with us for a long time um when I have a bad day, I come here and it's not so bad. <laughs> uh, you're looking at me in this dire situation and there you go, well, my, well, my day hasn't been bad. <laughs> oh, that's so funny, Dave. <laughs> positive people, positive energy. People here are definitely positive. I'm so glad for this community. I take expiration, take 
inspiration and motivation from here. Thank you so much. You're absolutely right. <laughs> positive people and positive energy. There is a super chat from Tomasz Miklos. Thank you so much. Uh, fellow Eastern Europeaner. Europeaner. Yeah. Eastern uh, person from Eastern Europe. Thank you. Thank you so much for your help. That from the bottom of my heart, uh, from myself and from my wife. Thank you. Maureen M. asking to pray for Diana. Let me write it down. Will do. Rake Flyer. I was told to bring a long black coat on a visit to Russia to blend in with the locals at night and winter. Uh, anything black would be fine. Not necessarily a long coat. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay P. Why are you fasting? I fast from time to time. I uh, do that. Three, four times a day. It's time to fast. It's uh, February. I did a video on fasting. Go back and watch it if you want. Um, I'm not going to do a video this time. Perhaps give updates and for patrons, for, um, for um, people who are sponsors, and perhaps some updates in the Telegram channel. Ferrari guy, that retaking of lost pride is the avoidance of shame. I was asking about in yesterday's question. China has similar society issues. Well, you're right. Uh, I would add to that. Not only the avoidance of shame, but when you... When you... Losing pride, not only you get shame, you get pain. Because you all of a sudden realize that you've done it to yourself. No enemies outside. No out there, no one out there wanting bad for you, you know, trying to destroy your life. But that's your actions. And then, my friend, it hurts. And shame is one thing, but that feeling of hurt, that's much worse. Lisa Marshall... Thank you for praying for my husband, son, and mother-in-law. Uh, they're all better now. Susan, Marshall, um, Lisa, shall we keep on praying? Uh, I will for now, but you let me know if you know we should stop or not. I'm very glad to hear that they're much better. Helen Svenitsky, Svenitsky um, long-time viewer, first-time poster. Stay strong and stay safe. Thank you, Helen. Um, thank you so much. Which country are you from? I appreciate the help, but you're coming here and watching regularly and just being with us is priceless. Thank you so much. Time's up. Says bot, says night bot. Um, says Bob and Nightbot and everyone. Okay. Oh, the highwayman. Hey, uh, how you feeling? Any improvements?
And Joy is here as well. Isabel. Andreas. Uh, anyway, please write uh, Lorna or Mommy on how you're feeling, the highwayman. Because we pray for you every day and you are, I remember of your case every time I say a prayer and I go over my list. And the last one comes from Truffles. Fear not, not for what I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, will help you, will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Let's uh, let's go into a prayer. Um, Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Let's do it. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us this day. We're grateful for that. Thank you for putting food on our tables, giving us roofs over our heads and surrounding us with people we love and who love us. Please help our children um, keep them healthy and safe and please give us wisdom to raise them by wisdom and by example that um, they, when they grow up they make this world a better place and will never fight in any wars. Please help stop the bloodshed in Ukraine. Reach out and touch people's hearts, souls, heads. Open their eyes. Talk to them. Show them things. Open the truth to them. Make them wake up so they make the right decision to stop the bloodshed. Please help the Ukrainians who have been affected by this terrible terrible tragedy send them help answer their prayers make their wishes come true they have suffered a great deal uh, please stop the suffering and soothe their souls give them send them love and send them forgiveness please please send everyone in ukraine an angel so they keep people out of harm's way and not one more drop of blood is shed anymore. Please help my country, Russia. Send your strongest angels, an army of them, with the sharpest swords. So they come down, led by Saint Michael, and get rid of all demons that have hijacked my country. Send those they send those demons to right where they those they are be, they belong to hell um, have them run my country make it right make it peaceful make it a good neighbor to everyone please help those who are traveling send them safe travels help those who are Helping Ukrainians open in their hearts, wallets, souls, uh, ho homes, houses. God bless those people. Please help the hungry ones, the homeless ones, the ones who are struggling with their faith, the ones who are not feeling well. Please surround them with your love and send them Show them your glory. You know, surround them with your warmth so they can feel good. They can feel your help and they can feel your presence. Please help Ukraine to rebuild. Make that country, help that country, help the Ukrainians 
rebuild their country to make it shine, to make it a technological showcase for everyone, to make it very comfortable place to live, place where everyone has warmth, um, heat in their homes, everyone's home is warm, they have electricity, uninterrupted internet, um, water, cold and hot water, and they have nice beautiful houses to live in, and they have peaceful sky over their heads. Also, please help Russian people open their eyes so they can see the truth. You know, um, they wake up from this lethargic sleep and learn what is really happening with them and around them. Um, so they can have real feelings. They can feel remorse. They can feel shame. They can feel they can, you know, do something about it. Please open their eyes and have them wake up from the lethargic sleep. Please give us all peaceful skies above our heads so there's never ever a war around us. Um, uh, please help reach out to every single woman who's pregnant and deciding whether to keep baby or not. Um, talk to every single one and have them make the right choice. Thank you so much for this community that I have so many people that come and watch me every single day and thank you for all the real friendships that have appeared in this community with help of it um, thank you for everyone who is watching and praying along with me right now please help everyone who's watching and praying and watching us pray please Hear everyone's prayer and make everyone's wish come true. Thank you so much. I would like to ask you for a few people who need your help bad. They are Wayne, Shirley, Debbie, Jen Allen, Finola, Lisa's husband and son, Lars Hendrik and Lars Hendrik's mother, the highwayman, Essie from the Scottish Isles, Outlander and family, Churis and family, Lars, Susan Marshall, Beulah, Boss Salmon, Janice Burgess, Alvin's mother, Teresa D, Marsha Tucker, uh, give her strength and please have her dad rest in peace, um, Garcia, Castellanos, Terry Carter, Joe McMahon, uh, Meta Spencer, Deanna and family from Belgrade, Yelena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie, Galina, Igor, Karen from Maine, Janine, Michael Milkiewicz, Marlene, Paul Bins, Richard, Mallory M., Dirk Misler, James Rhodes, Terry, Brittany, S., Hannah and her children, Richard Burris, Angelica at Life, and Scan Family's grandson, Grace, Barb, Randolph, Nelly, Arkady, Yuri, and everyone who is in Mykolaiv, Ukraine, Harry's family, Merlinda's niece, um, Ian James, Doug, Rafaela from Anna, Priscilla, Michelin, King Nero, Gaby Hyman, Donald, Deborah, Lisa's son, Jade, Allison, Dave Moyers, Terry Scrugg, Janice Burgess, Maureen M. and her sister, Mr. Hansen, Heidi, Bob, Tony, Kayleen, Rob, Umil, Jennifer, Matt, Ashley and family, Mr. Dean Spooner and his church called Our Savior Lutheran Church, Lisa Kumrian, Jacob Adam Oliver, Treasure, 
Kyle's wife, Grace Philosophy, our dear friend. Maggie, Carmen's sister. Vladislav and his father, uh, Sergei from Ukraine. Susie Myler, Gina, Warfarer, uh, EMS paramedic, Liz, Lori Miles, husband, please send relief from pain, send good health, Sherry, Layla, Philip's mother. I also would like to ask for everyone in Ukraine who is right now without electricity, heat, hot water, please help uh, restore the utilities, bring you know the convenience back into people's lives and bring the heat back to their homes. I would like to ask for a few children, very special ones. Their cadence, Maverick, Sebastian, Coulter, Theo, Madi, and Ansley. Please give them good health, give them recovery, and send them your love your help and send them send their families strength and surround them with your love too I would like to ask you for all children of Ukraine as well who have been affected by this terrible tragedy and for all people for all children who have been affected in Russia thank you so much our dear Lord Jesus Christ Amen my friends thank you so much for coming, giving me a message again. Thank you for praying with me. Thank you for giving me a chance to pray with you. You are absolutely awesome and you rock. And um, I will see you tomorrow with another message. Please come back. I will see you soon. Carthago de Lenda Est.